All right. Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing this morning? Today is May 9th. And um, we are here because uh, we are here every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on um, the um, on the group, The Rich Stylist. And The Rich Stylist is really all about getting rich from the inside out. So it's, it, you know, this group came up and this work really came up from, um, from a lot of mistakes that I have made uh, through my time as, you know, as I started to go through this um, process of, you know, kind of looking at my, really how it came up is I always said I really wanted to, to earn more and I wanted a fuller life. And I saw people having this fuller life and I was happy. So it's, it's not that I wasn't happy, but I wasn't getting the results that I wanted in my business and in my life that I truly wanted. And I saw other people that were getting far better results than I was. And, you know, a lot of times people would say to me, especially people like my mom, and they would say, you know, aren't you happy with what you have? And it wasn't that I wasn't grateful, because there's a difference. It wasn't that I wasn't grateful. I was really grateful for where I'd come and what I had, but I wanted more. And I felt guilty for wanting more. Uh, I felt like wanting more was bad. And I started to, to have almost like this shame feeling for wanting more. And it bothered me. And then I almost kind of saw other people wanting more money and more this that, you know, that work with me. And I was like, huh, like, well, everybody wants more. And I started really thinking like, so it's okay to want more. And then what would happen is I would put together these vision boards and say, I want more. And then I would be demonized for doing that by staff members, by family members. And I know they wanted more. I know they wanted it too, but why were they demonizing me for wanting it? And I felt like, it was it because I already had a successful company and they felt like I was being greedy? Like I couldn't understand it. And so I went on this quest to study human behavior and to really get to the bottom of the way I was feeling. And in that, I realized that it's natural for all of us to want more. And although you may have created a successful company and you, you may, um, be a stylist or a salon owner, it really doesn't matter. Um, but you want more too. And, and you want more for your team, you want more for yourself. And it's not really being greedy. It's, it, it's a, this natural process of growing. And so there's a quote here from Napoleon Hill. And he says, there is one quality that one must possess to win. And that is a definiteness of purpose and the knowledge of what wants and a burning desire to possess it. And many of you have been on my Think and Grow Rich workshop, Signs of Getting Rich workshops. And it, it's, it really, in everything that we study, it really is about knowing what it is that you want. And it's about having a definiteness of purpose. And so we went through this process of understanding what your purpose is and how do you live that purpose out? And, and that purpose involves other people, not just ourselves. And so there, I'm going to show you two wheels. I focus on the five core areas and I have switched this up a little bit. Um, cause I made it, I made it a little less because it was overwhelming. So if you're, you're, but this really breaks it down super well. And so you could kind of draw a circle on your paper and put these areas in. So it would be career finance. I installed personal growth because I spend so much time on personal growth 
that I felt it deserved its own category. Um, health, family, love relationships. So you could separate them. So, cause family and then relationships, other relationships other than family. Um, social life, like friends, and then attitude and career. So when you see the next wheel, I kind of made everything in one. So you, your personal belt and your career would be in one. Um, this is really kind of like expanded version, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna write one through 10, 10 being the very best and one being the worst. And you're going to color it in and each area you're going to grade yourself in how are you doing in each area. And this is going to give you kind of like a map. And so it's never going to be the perfect wheel. But we want to focus on an area of life that we want to do a little bit better at. And so you know, ener where focus goes, energy flows. And we are energetic beings. And so as we're focusing on one area, we're putting our energy into that area. And the, it's very important. I, I have to say, it's very important how you focus. And I'm really going to spend a lot of time in that area next week. And that next week is going to be more about the energy behind goals. Okay. This week, it's really about understanding what it is that you want. And I want you to think about it as we're working from your, the outcome backwards. So we're working from your end result backwards. Okay. When we start setting them. This is a snapshot of where you are currently at this time. And so you're going to take the areas that you feel like need the most help and the lowest, you know, that got kind of like the lowest grade or the, you know, the lowest score. And you're going to focus on those first. And the important thing is you cannot focus on everything. So just write those down. And so here, I just, I teach this one from this one a lot because many people don't have their goals written out. And so it becomes super overwhelming. Um, so the other one's a little bit more advanced. This one's sort of simple and it's just um, six core areas finance, health, spirit, love, relationships, career. And, um, and there's one that's not in here, um, but it, it's worth putting in. Uh, and it is, let me just go back. Oh, God, this thing. Uh, it's worth putting in and it's contribution. And tithing is, and we're going to talk about that next week. Tithing is um, a big deal and, con and, and giving away things to other people is, is really important. So if you ever read, there's a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. And this is from scripture. I mean, this goes back, you know, for years. This is in the Bible. They talk about how important it is to, you know, save 10% of your earnings and give 10% away. And so it, it doesn't have to be to a religious, you know, institution. It can be to, you know, St. Jude's Hospital. It could be to whatever it is that you feel in your heart, but tithing is so important, so important. Um, what was the other one to write down in the wheel? Oh, contribution. I would add that as, so like, how are you contributing? And then if you want me to go back to the other, to the other wheel, this wheel, 
This one has a little bit more detail of everything. And then I may even add, like with this, I would probably even add contribution. This is the one I use, by the way. And then I added contribution. Um, the one that I usually teach from is this one, especially if I'm doing a goal setting 101 workshop, because it's like I said, it could be a bit overwhelming for people that are just getting started. If you are somebody that is going to listen to this video and, it, and you are one of those people that it, are just getting started, listen, just start. Don't worry about like, am I doing it right? Is it, you know, I've never set goals before. Uh, you know, my mentor, Joseph says, what you write, you invite. And if you understand anything, if you understand anything about the law of attraction, just know that you are attracting everything to you at every moment. And when you write it out on the paper, it is one form of coming to reality. It's going, everything is going from spirit to thought to, to physical. So how, how important it is to write something down is because it's becoming more tangible. Your goals your imagination is becoming real. You're putting it on paper. There's nothing more important than that. And most people just look, look this stuff over. And it's, it, we really can't look it over. We have to pay attention to this. So we went, last week we talked about um, how do we set goals? So you're gonna take the goals that we're gonna put in today and you're gonna run them through this filter. Um, and we're gonna get more specific as we go. We talked about roles last week, like what role are you playing with these goals? And it's important to think about the role because this is not about getting something, it's about we're on this path of becoming more. You're expanding, you're becoming more, you're not getting more you're becoming more. So you're growing. So think about it as a tree in the forest. You're, 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 you know, you could be in the forest for hundreds of years. And what happens is you started out at this little tiny tree and now you've grown into this big, huge oak tree and you don't change. You don't become, you know, uh, an apple tree, right? You, you stay an oak tree, but what happens is you become wiser, you become different, you become more of something, right? So the first is SMART goals is specific. We need to know exactly what we want and we're gonna go into that. How will you measure it? Is it attainable? Is it relevant to your purpose of what it is that you do? Or is it just like, you know, you're pulling it out of the blue? Um, is it, is, what's the time frame on, on this? Okay. So what we're going to do is for each area. So you have, let's say you have six, seven core areas that you wrote down, um, including contribution. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each area and I used relationships and you're going to put two columns. So you're going to put, it's going to be like a T. Okay. And on one side of the column, you're going to put what you don't want. And the other side of the column, you're going to put what you do. Want. And I always think it's easier. Like I pay attention to contrast. So if there's something that doesn't make me feel good, if I brush up against something, you ever hear the path of take the path of least resistance. If I brush up against contrast and I feel friction, I kind of think about it and I step back and I'm like, okay, is this because it's something I don't want or, or is this because I want something on the other side of this and I truly want it. And this is just, I'm going to have to get to the other side and it's going to be uncomfortable. Or is it that it's going against my values? 
and it's going against who I am as a person and it's causing a lack of harmony and, and a icky feeling inside of me because we have to be able to discern between the two, right? And discernment's like really difficult. And there's two things that I use for this when it comes to discerning. Is it love or fear? So, okay. So example, I want to make a million dollars a year. Showing up every single day on social media or marketing or something. And I'm just giving you a, an, an example. I just pulled it out of thin air. Um, showing up on social media and doing marketing every day and you know, staying on course every single day, it's going to be hard. But if my goal is that I want this, it's really out of love because I'm being pulled and I'm being pulled to grow. And so it's really out of love because I, I'm fully capable of growing except fear is causing me not to grow. So if I don't want to go on social media because I'm worried about what other people think, that's fear. And fear is stopping me from getting what it is that I want, right? So that's just an example. So is it love or is it fear? And, and fear, doubt, and worry are not our friends. So relationships, so I just gave you some examples. So what I want is a man that is financially free. So a man that has stability, has financial freedom, can pay his own way, you know, all of that stuff. What I don't want is a man without a stable income. What I want is a man that is supportive of my dreams and that works together on our dreams. And to me, a man that takes dreams seriously. Like I want somebody that really is a goal setter and a goal achiever and just loves life and wants to live to the fullest. I don't want a man that wants me to only support what he does in his dreams. So, so do you see the contrast of the two? So because I know what I don't want, it makes me real easy to come up with what I do want. So I want you to take a few minutes and I want you to think about each category. And it's probably easier for you to think about what you don't want because sometimes you get it. And then quickly come into these are the things I do want. Okay. So that's, and this, this could be a several hour project. And, and I redo this. I do it every quarter. I, I go back and I revisit it. So I tear it apart and do vision boards now every 90 days, because I want to make sure that I'm putting my energy towards the right things. Um, and these are just examples of, you know, something. So um, I live by this. Where focus goes, energy flows. And I don't know who came up with this. I know Tony Robbins uses it a lot, but I don't know who the originator is. So I didn't put any name. Um, and focus on feeling good. Like focus on feeling good. It doesn't matter. Your, your unconscious not, mind, believe it or not, does not know the difference between real, your reality, and your imagination. It has, it cannot decipher between the two. The only thing that energy knows is feeling. So we always want to get into, well, this, you know, it, into our reality, but we don't have to be in our reality. This is, this is the real deal. We don't have to be there. We just have to feel good. So example, yesterday uh, was Mother's Day. I did not want to clean on Mother's Day. <laughs> I was like, why am I cleaning? But I was having some people over, my mom and, you know, my sister. And, and so 
I was like, okay. So what did I do? I popped on Stevie Wonder and I took the vacuum out and I danced my way through vacuuming. And you know what? I never thought about the fact that I didn't want to clean. I just enjoyed every moment of the process. And so, you know, when you're doing something and, and this goes to every single thing you do throughout the day from waking up in the morning, like, how do you wake up? <laughs> how do you wake up? What's the first thing that you listen to? Because whatever frequency that you went to bed in is more than likely the frequency that you're going to wake up in, right? And so do you meditate before you go to bed? What are you listening to? Like, I always have something that I am listening to that that's sort of calibrating my energy through the night. And even when I first pop up, if it's, if it's a worry, if it's, if it is one thing that I'm worrying about something, I, I change it around. I put something on, I do a meditation and I change it around. So it is all about feeling good. So what are you going to do to feel good? All right, if you have never come to our um, Monday morning, if you are a stylist or salon owner, this group is for you. It's called The Rich Stylist, and uh, you could join our group. It is only for people that are really serious about personal development. So if that is you, we would love to have you. And so, all right. <laughs>